shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that bought my liberty I do not know just why I'm
Praise God, praise God. Would you please stand with me to your feet and uh, let's look to the Lord. Um, it's a fine morning in Southern California. Uh, sometimes I don't care for it because people want to go to the beach and want to go to marine land or whatever. They want to go different places, which is okay. We've been shut in for so long, you know, and people need to get out. Uh, I myself was able to get out and play some golf this past week, and it felt real good. Just breathing all that <clears throat> infected California air, you know. No, no, no. It was pretty out there among the weed and the trees. And that was good. So praise God. It's good to see you. Uh, there's people, you know, that uh, are traveling and others. And so, but we're glad to have you. I'm glad you made it this week. And, I was hoping for others uh, that would come, and usually I get on the phone and I, <clears throat> I call Brother Louie or, uh, or I call Sister Nadine or somebody, you know, just to remind them that we miss them and part of us. And uh, please don't mind me for joking, but I, I really um, appreciate seeing you this morning. Father in heaven, thank you so much, dear God, for all the blessings you bestow upon us daily, Lord. Lord, if it wasn't for you, where would we be? Lord, we have so much to be thankful for, and we thank you this day for life and strength and health. Thank you for well-being, Lord. Thank you for your mercies. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. Be with those who are needy today and those who are sick and afflicted or those who are sad. Lift them up, dear God. Be with those that are downhearted, O God. Be with those who are mourning and grieving, God. Soothe their pain and their sorrow. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the way you've been ministering to us, dear God, in these days. Now, Lord, come and fill this place with your presence, oh God. Come and pour out your spirit upon us, Lord. Bring others that are to come, that should be come, and should come, dear God. Bring them, God. Help them not to be afraid any longer of this pandemic. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for the well-being. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Be glorified. Be exalted in our midst, O oh God. And we'll give you thanks when we ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen. And amen. Come on, church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise. Let's praise the Lord. Come on. our peace, faithful is our God. He will come through, we won't be moved, faithful is our God. This is our strength, this is our shield, faithful is our God. Cannot fail, we will prevail. Faithful is our God. Oh, yes, we are standing because the enemy's defeated. We'll always be standing on the promises of Jesus. Lifting our Promises, yes, 
My soul says yes to your promises. My soul says yes, yes. My soul says yes. My soul says yes to your promises. Oh yes, we are standing. Cause the enemy's defeated. We'll always be standing.
Here 
Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I see. It's Jesus, I believe. I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I see. With all I Hallelujah. Father, we love you this morning, Lord. As we continue to worship you, Lord, this morning, Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We want to thank you for your goodness, Lord, towards us, God. Father, we thank you that we are never alone, God. Hallelujah. Give him praise this morning. If you want to praise him, praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Be free in the spirit to worship God. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we honor you this morning, God. We know that we are never alone, God. Lord, through every circumstance, through every trial, through every tribulation in our lives, we know that you work all things for the good to them that love you, God, and to them who are called according to your purpose, God. Thank you this morning. I pray that you would strengthen your church this morning, Father. Lord, that you quicken our spirits, O oh God, and awaken our souls, God, to your presence, O oh God. Father, for you have called us to be made more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord God. We trust in you this morning, Jesus. Lord, we want to remember this morning, of course, those who are, Lord, less fortunate that are shut in, God, this morning, the elderly, God. Remember, Lord, brother uh, uh, Manuel Pro, God. Remember, Lord, Sister Joyce, God. We pray your hand upon her, God. We pray that all would be well with her, God, and that you just touch her, God. Reveal yourself to her, God, that she may know that, Lord, that you promise to never leave her or never forsake her, God. Bless her, God. Bless LaVon Adams this morning. God, remember her, Lord. Remember Sister Viola, God. Remember the elderly this morning, God. Touch them with your mighty hand, God. Reveal yourself to them in a way that they can understand, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We praise you this morning, God. We pray that for the continuance of your Holy Spirit to be present here in this service, God. We ask your anointing upon our pastor as he ministers the word of God to us, Lord. Lord, prepare our hearts that we might receive a word from you, God, and that we may learn to obey and not just be hearers only of your word, but doers of your word, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, of course, we want to not forget those, Lord, who have lost loved ones, God. Lord, remember our dear family, Lord, uh, Sister uh, Katrina and Karen, God, even our pastor and Manfred, God, continue, Lord, to heal their hearts, God. 
Lord, I know it's a process, God, but we pray your healing touch upon them, that you give them strength for each new day, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Remember, Lord, the Estrada family, Lord, Muncie and his family, God, have your hand upon them, Lord, in behalf of his mother that went on to be with you, Lord. Remember also the Chavez family and the loss of his father, God. We pray for peace and comfort upon the families, God. And if they're not saved, Lord, the family members, we pray the Spirit of God would reach out to the family members that are left behind, God, that you touch, Lord, and save their souls, God. Oh, God, that they may not go on to eternity without you, Lord. For your word does say that it's appointed unto men once to die, and then comes the judgment, God. Lord, we need to be ready today, Lord. Help people to be ready. Continue to pour out your spirit and to use your church to be a beacon of light for you, Father. And we're going to be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. And all of God's people shouted, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. You may be seated and just greet somebody there from where you are. It's good to see you all this morning. We're so happy that you're here. And like Pastor John was saying, the weather, thank God the weather didn't keep you at home. Amen. This weather is really good. We're blessed to be in this part of the world. You know, we're looking forward to this week. Uh, let me just give you the uh, schedule for the services. This Friday we'll be here at 7 p.m., you know, it's our Good Friday service that we have every year, and we invite you to come and be here. And then we'll come back on Sunday morning at 6 a.m. And it will be our uh, early morning service, and then we'll come back again at 11 o'clock on that Sunday. So that's next Sunday. So Friday, and then Sunday morning, and Sunday at 11 o'clock. We will not have Sunday school next week, and we will not have uh, an evening service. So make plans on that, and I know that we'll... Be happy to have you here, and it's going to be a good good time. It's good to have all of you here in Sergio. And Sherry, it's good to have you with us. I'm so glad that you're here. May the Lord bless you. And if we haven't seen you, brother, it's so good to have you and your family also. And it's good to see all of you. Oh, yes, Sister Nadine, it's also it's good to see you there. We're so happy here. Praise God. Praise God. And, you know, it is good to see all of you here this morning. Uh, you know, we are thankful that our church is open that we could have a place to come and worship the Lord. You know, not every church is still open. A lot of churches probably will never open again. But thank God that we are open and we're going to continue to be faithful to the Lord. We're going to continue to honor God. Amen. No, amen. Let's give the Lord yes. Yes. So, it, you know, we are just thankful that we have a place to come and worship the Lord this morning. Uh, don't forget also that if you want to bring some Easter lilies, you know, you're welcome to bring them. You can bring them tonight. You can bring them on Sunday morning so that we can put them here in the church and just, it will just make our church look more, uh, have, have not only have the uh, the feeling that we have of Easter release of being during Easter, but also, you know, it will just help in the atmosphere. I think it would be good. Amen. You know, God has been faithful in our, to our church for many, many years, like I was sharing the other day, and it's all because of you. You know, God has been faithful to us, and you've been faithful to God. So let's continue to be faithful to the Lord as we give to him, as we are give our tithes and our offerings. Uh, you know, you can never outgive God. That's the one thing I have learned in my life. I've been faithful to God, you know, and I know God has always taken care of me. Oh, sis, I didn't see you there. I'm sorry. I didn't see you, but I didn't recognize you with the mask. It's good to have you with us. Uh, so God has been faithful to all of us, so let us continue to be faithful to the Lord. And this is what's going to help our church keep going forward. You know, the Lord put this church here for a purpose in this corner of 3rd and F. And uh, we're going to continue with the call that Pastor Young received many years ago. We're going to continue to be faithful. And, uh, you know, it's going to take all of us working together. So can we do that? Amen. I know we can do it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful, Father, for this place. We are thankful for a house of praise. Because we have a place that we could come and honor you, to worship you, to lift up our hands, Father Lord, and sing songs of praise. Thank you, Lord, because you have been faithful to us for many, many, many years. And, Lord, I know it takes a lot of effort and it takes work, Father. But, Lord, you've been with us, Father, through all these years. And as we continue, Father, to go forward, Lord, we know that it's going to take the effort from everyone, Lord, just doing their part. Help us to be faithful, Father Lord, and help us to give this morning, Lord, with a cheerful heart. Knowing, Father, Lord, that we're obedient to your word. Bless this offer. Bless the people that are about to give. 
And Lord, bless our service as we continue this morning. We honor you and we worship you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may come and deposit your gifts and your offerings and tithes in this little basket. Uh, meanwhile, I tell you about a correction on your bulletin. Uh, I know it says 6 p.m., but there's no 6 p.m., Gabby, on there, on the bulletin for this coming week. So it's uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock, and no 6 p.m. Okay, just a little typo. But anyway, I was hoping that more people would show up because it's Palm Sunday. And, well, let's hope that next Sunday, help me call people. I think people just needed a, a call of encouragement or say, hey, we're here, I'm here, I'll, I'll keep you safe or whatever. I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, one that refuses to allow in any way fear and trepidation or whatever to, uh, you know, shorten my flight. And uh, I just thank the Lord that, that God is with us. Pray for Sister Joni Brown. She's having some physical problems. I told her, Joni, I hope you're not playing hooky somewhere. She said, no, no, Pastor. I'm just uh, not doing too well. Anyway, keep Sister <coughs> Kathy Novak and and others of their family that are mourning, but um, I know that God is able, amen, and helps us to deal with situations, and I know that um, some people are stronger than others, but uh, we're able to go forward. I want to thank God for a new engineer up there. You don't see him, but his name is Chris. Brother Chris Russo, and he's out there. And so any mistakes this morning, blame him, not, not Janine. <laughs> now we thank God for him. He was, was getting, I, I like people like him because they want to get involved, and that's cool. That's really good, and I know that uh, Sister Debbie doesn't mind sitting down here by herself, and that's okay. Remember the bolts, they haven't been around. Somebody called them and said, hey, hey, bolts, did you get loose or what? Did the bolts lose something? Or <laughs> oh, whatever. But encourage others, because we need to. I mean, this is the time when we need to pull together. And uh, thank God that things are opening up a little bit more. And now you can eat inside of restaurants. And, you know, it's cool. I, I thank God for that. So I think today I would like to eat outside for this such a beautiful day. But anyway, so turn to Mark, the Gospel of Mark. And remember that we started talking about, <clears throat> about the rapture. I have felt a certain um, feeling that, and um, understanding in the, from the word of God that uh, we are close to the coming of the Lord. So I hope that you will continue to with us and take advantage of the Sunday night because tonight we'll show the second half of the first half on uh, the uh, rapture by Perry Stone. So don't forget, I, I, a lot of information, a lot of good stuff. This morning, just want to pray, I mean, speak on watch and pray. Uh, I probably have two or three different sermons on this particular venue, but um, I want to uh, uh, encourage you that this is the time to be prayed up and watchful, okay? This is it. This is the time. It's no time to prepare. Remember the wise uh, virgins in Matthew 25? Only those that are prepared. The others didn't make it. And, uh, you know, the Lord said there'd be two sleeping in bed, one be taken, one be left behind. So husbands and wives, stay in touch. Make sure your partner's saved. You know, workers at work, wherever. Two men walking up a hill, one left and one taken. So this is why I feel this. Uh, urgency to, uh, you know, begin to sound the trumpet, Pastor Walter, to people to uh, stay awake and let's, uh, let's live on that uh, expectation of uh, the soon return of the Lord. Are you in Mark 13, chapter 13? Are you? Okay, I'm picking it up on verse 34. 
Well, the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey who left his house. When, when you see the reference, the Son of Man means Jesus. As a man taking a far journey who left his house, gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. Cock crowing in Spanish, we call that la madrugada. Okay, just so you understand. Um, verse 36, less coming, how? Less coming suddenly. No, me no, no forewarning or nothing. Let's come in suddenly, he find you what? Sleeping. Of course, he's not talking here about natural sleep or physical sleep. He's talking about spiritual. Um, watchfulness. And then he says in verse 37, and what I say unto you, many of the disciples, he said, I say unto all, watch, watch. You and I need to be watchful. You and I need to be uh, paying attention to what's going on inside of us. Paying attention to what's going on in your partner. You see your partner spending too much time watching, you know, sports events. Say, hey, when was the last time you read your Bible or spent some time with Jesus? We need to check each other out because uh, nobody's going to get to heaven on the shirt tails of someone else. In no way. Nobody can live holy enough and, and close to God enough to, uh, you know, cover and partner. Your children, I, I hate those damnable PlayStation, whatever you, <clears throat> so many kids, just continually in the streets and home and whatever. Man, like they're mesmerized, they're hypnotized. I think pretty soon they're gonna have to start a delivering service. Uh, to deliver those that are hooked on, you know. This guy was crossing the street and he never looked one way. I said, hey, dummy, why don't you look? They can run you over, you will know what happened. It like it didn't touch him. I even insulted him a little bit too. See if you get a reaction, nah. You ever notice that? There's a difference in people. I was at a place coming and here's an older person maybe 40 years old or above and uh, came and you know he he hurried up so I could turn and another situation a couple of young guys right maybe it was a guy and a girl and they come and 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 they know that the light and you think they would have hurried no they go They took all the 39 seconds or whatever that they give him to the light. It's just a difference in people, the way people connect and the way people think. And we need to wake up this generation. They're being lulled to sleep, even in the churches. Churches wanna go, people wanna go to a church for a 29 and a half minute sermonette or whatever. I hope you had a good breakfast this morning because I mean to preach this morning. I got so much here, you're gonna be here for a while. You're gonna be hungry. That's okay. And some of you, it's gonna be good because you haven't been in church in a while. So you make up some of this here. <laughs> so, um, when I talk about these things, um, and this, this particular story can be connected to the story of the pound, you know, where you gave them pounds or talents, as we call it, the parallel talents. So, uh, he also warned them about his coming and warned the disciples with his commands. He said, occupy till I come. Stay busy and watch and pray for you know not the hour your master will come again. So this implies that their spiritual life and their God-given abilities were the very things that they needed to be faithful in. It's okay if you don't make father of the year, mother of the year, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're not gonna give any medals up there for that. But when it comes to spiritual things, like I spoke the other day about spiritual exercise, 
versus physical exercise. You can still make the rapture even if you're a few pounds overweight, okay? Don't worry about that. We took a ride one time in uh, Lake Nasbury Farm and they had a limit there. And my wife and I, we were gonna go up too, so we both got on there and the machine said, one at a time, please. <laughs> yeah, but not with the rapture. Even if you're a ton of joy, they'll take you. You'll fly, because you're gonna lose it anyway. There's not gonna be no chubbies in heaven. I heard that. So again, <laughs> I'm trying to keep this light, okay, folks, because I don't want you to think I'm being morbid here. But uh, spiritual growth men becoming like Jesus, and their talents were to be the equipment for his plan and purpose. Are you hearing me? Their modus operandi was to be there <clears throat> watchful waiting for his return. We could say that we are living in the time of Jacob's troubles or sorrows, and we can also say that God's judgments are not only personal, but also <clears throat> open to sight as well upon this world today. Uh, we must guard against presumptuous thoughts, thinking that somehow we're gonna escape the judgments which uh, are gonna fall upon uh, the nation. But we cannot think of ourselves as favored of God and escape the hardships and discomforts that are gonna fall upon the nation that has turned away from God. Sometimes, you know, the righteous suffer right along the unrighteous. God has never played favorites, and I believe that this has been the case in every generation that I, you can think of. God causes the rain to fall upon the just and the unjust, right? Everybody can enjoy this sunshine today, and it's from the Lord. Christians in all ages, church, have suffered war and depression right along with our neighbors. Uh, think of Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and David, and Peter, and Paul, suffering the common trials and tribulations of, you know, <clears throat> these, their contemporaries. So, but through it all, God never allowed them to be wiped out or totally destroyed. The promise has always been, I'll never what? Leave you nor forsake you. David wrote many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. The apostle Paul, a man indeed tested by God and tried, he wrote to Timothy, persecutions and afflictions, he said, which uh, happened to me or befell upon me at Antioch, at Iconium and Lystra, uh, what persecutions I endured, he said, and out of all of them, the Lord delivered me. Uh, just how much of the beginning of sorrows God's people will witness before Jesus appears to catch away the church, what we call the rapture of the church, is not too clear. But according to the scriptures, the scriptures warned regarding the last days, and they all suggest that there's going to be a real time of testing. This world's not getting any better, folks. I'm sorry because there's the idea of the separation of the wheat and the chaff. It has to take place. Uh, this represents a sober warning for us to watch and pray, to watch against the traps or deception because there's the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life that we need to be aware of. How many of you know that if you live your garden alone, <clears throat> weeds are gonna come up whether you like it or not? You don't even have to feed them. They come equipped. Satan can orchestrate such a, a cunning campaign enough to deceive even the very elect, the Bible says. Uh, so these words cannot be taken lightly, my friends. Jesus never spoke of idle, uh, well, he didn't say idle words. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. And we have already begun to see a developing scenario of uh, conditions that, you know, the Bible predicts and is going to get worse, worse and worse. Hunger and famine all over the world, not enough material resources, a global health <coughs> problem, uh, 
crime and violence. Uh, these are worldwide problems. You know, this COVID has turned our lives upside down. It has changed things. And maybe some things will never come back to what we used to think of normal. <clears throat> you know, the drug, the drug problem continues to increase uh, violence. These are things in this world. Uh, in the arena of faith, what can we say? We have felt the sifting and the flood of deceptions, <clears throat> the rise of occultism and the falling away of shallow believers. If you be careful to read sometime the first three chapters of Revelation, <clears throat> you will come to the seventh church, uh, which is the church that represents the end time church. Uh, the loudly saying church uh, is really an apostate church. And even though we see things happening uh, uh, that God is doing, yet, folks, there's a lot of things going the other way. We're losing ground continually. Uh, this administration today, I think they're lost. I don't think they know. Did you see the president falling, climbing those stairs? They said the wind knocked him down? Come on now. Isn't what he says? Come on now. I believe this world is being prepared for the Antichrist. And the pressures and the spirit can fell, be felt more and more each day, constantly. But we must not let that wicked spirit of this world dampen our spirituality or in any way hinder us. I hate for all these people that are coming to our country. Most of them are ungodly uh, people. They're, they're not going to make our country better. Hello? They're coming from countries that have been dipped in all kinds of, you know, uh, sin, debauchery, violence. worshiping idols. A lot of these southern, you know, like central on down, they have a lot of uh, Indian stuff. Uh, if you go down to Oaxaca and down below, you see what I'm talking to you about. Nice country, but the people are dipped into idolatry and all kinds of things. I know I was preaching in a marketplace in Honduras one year, <clears throat> and I'm telling you, uh, the, the, the fetishes and all of that that they, you know, um, God help us. Haven't we noticed there's a lot of talk today of, about stress and pressure? And the truth of it all is that we need to realize, friends, that the spirit of this end, uh, of this end time is one of stress. Stress. Not only will the world experience the consequences of these uh, pressures that we have warned uh, that it uh, will also be great that it would wear out the saints as Daniel 7, 25 says. So, you know, in view of these things, there is no way uh, that we can stand up to all that is coming without watching and praying. Friend, you're gonna stand in those days, you better get down on your knees. And you better start, stop, start spending some time with Jesus. It don't matter how good of a, of a healthcare or whatever, plan you have, it don't matter. It don't matter. People are dying every day. Every day. Hundreds of people. And that COVID hasn't stopped yet. <clears throat> don't take it lightly. So Jesus was not just giving us <clears throat> gentle suggestions in his words here. After all, this was part of his prayer to the Father to keep them. It is arresting to me to hear the earnest voice of Jesus saying, watch and pray, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The Lord being able to see, <clears throat> to see down the corridor of time, he could view all that was coming down. Uh, all he could say to them is, you better watch and pray. Even in the Lord's prayer, it says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the evil one. The Lord being able to see down uh, he foresaw this terrible danger that wouldn't fade us, that wouldn't, would uh, face us all, and, and prayed that we would be kept. Because it's going to get hairy, folks. You know that every race is run, is won in the last 10 yards. Hello? <clears throat> so as, as close as we get to the end, it's going to be tough. 
The devil's throwing out every single thing you can think of to distract people. Even believers, you know, the good life. We got enough money. Even in this middle of whatever we're in, I don't even know where we're in, but anyway. We got plenty of money. And you're getting more money that you don't deserve, but you're getting it. Hello there. Just make sure you give the Lord his cut, okay? Somebody told me that they really gotten three different stimulus or whatever. I only got one last year. That was it. <clears throat> Kathy and I got a couple of checks. I don't know what the deal is, but remember, okay, honor the Lord. There's something sinister about this wearing out pressure. I think it would be a lot easier to, you know, recognize the roaring of, of an actual lion as a terrifying fool because, you know, that would alert us immediately, Right? Right? Are you folks here? But you know, this pressure is like high cholesterol. It's lying sneaking. It's like odorless, deadly gas. To stand and resist in the last days, friends, the pressure of the adversary will need all the sustaining power of God. We're going to need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This, this pressure comes to us to test the limit till, till we all have left, till we all have, till, till the only thing we have left is trusting God. It'll come to, to take away all your self-confidence and whatever you have and so that, you know, you turn to God. The question is, will we hang on to the dawning of this coming? Are we going to be able to stand to escape all these things will be coming upon the face of the earth and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus said, be faithful unto death, amen? Be faithful unto death. There's something very chilling in that warning that the very elect might be deceived or could be deceived, a better way to say it. If God doesn't shorten the days, things are gonna get tough. Today, my friends, uh, temptation and and all kinds of things are right there. You can sin by just pressing a button on your, on your iPad. The other day I got this picture on the telephone and I said, oh my God, who sent me this? Some naked woman. Well, how they got into my phone? How, how, they sent me that. And why would they send me that? Because the devil knows, right? The devil knows how to come at us. He'll do all kinds of things. How many calls a day do you get about, oh, you got this much money, just send it in. Oh, we, we can sell your house in 10 seconds. Oh, we can do that. You know, you got all these offers. I'm telling you, it's there. There have been sporadic cases, you know, where certain individuals have denied the faith. Some of these individuals have written books and sermons, which have been a blessing and inspiration to many. They've done that. And yet they have publicly stated that they no longer believe in the Bible and his teachings. Because they came to the conclusion that there was no validity to the whole idea of Christianity. They fell victims to the wearing out pressure. Be careful, the devil's a thief. No matter how strong you feel today, he can rob you. If you just relax your watch, if you just get a little lazy about prayer and Bible study and sharing your faith, <clears throat> the devil will get the best of you. Dem Demonic deception is a huge force to contend with because there's no idle wor warning. No warning. Those who take our Lord's warning casually or perhaps they think they stand the Bible says they need to take heed lest they fall because this could bring into a real rough uh, awakening and experience. Over the years, God's people have had to exercise all their faith and loyalty in order to remain faithful and hold true to God. Even my father, when he was older there towards the end of his life, I remember one day he, my mom told me that he turned to her and he called her Mari and said, Mari, you really think there's a real heaven and all of that? Of course, my mother being the preacher she was, she straightened him out in a minute, had him on his knees praying right away. 
For the last days, Jesus commands, hold fast that which the, yeah, you have till I come. Again, we see hope, how loyalty is going to be tested, not just for ourselves, but for all of God's people, all of God's people. We owe it to ourselves and our posterity to truly make an honest effort to walk together and to stand united in our faith in God than we have never done before. I was trying to explain to my sister <clears throat> my relationship with Kathy because it wasn't just one of romanticism, but it was one also of spirituality. You know, I brought my wife to the Lord. I won my wife to the Lord. She was not saved. She knew nothing about Jesus. She was just a young Catholic young girl. And I, with God's help, I was able to share, minister to her, teach her a lot of what she learned. And, and then, of course, all the things she learned on herself. But I was trying to explain when two lives have truly become one and they're so intertwined, when one is missing, a big part of you is gone. Big chunk. And uh, it's uh, something that we think about. And even though the Lord has given us so much and there's power for God and God has provided for us to be able to overcome and win those things, yet there are things in the natural that you have to really come to grips with. It's not easy. So the Bible teaches and warns that we're going to need Stay in power, stay in power. And this power stems from our inner resources being constantly replenished and renewed and refreshed, filled with the Holy Spirit, always being ready, prepared. Why? Because it's going to be suddenly. It's going to be at a time that you don't expect it. It's going to happen. This is what it means to watch and pray. Every word that God has ever spoken will be absolutely fulfilled. Are you listening? To confess otherwise is to be disloyal to Christ. God has given us plenty in the word, you know. And this does not mean that, you know, uh, we will participate of all his fulfillment, even though it will come to pass. Many a believer has lost out with God because they got tired of waiting for God to do what they hoped he would do. Even the Bible says, be not wearing well-doing because in due time, you're going to reap a harvest if you faint not. See? There's very little the enemy will not do to make you lose your confidence in God and your faith in his word. He'll make the word of God boring to you. He'll make prayer not very appealing and so forth. I don't know if you ever watch a police show, I think Kathy called, I think she said it was Blue Bloods or something. <clears throat> and I, I used to kid her and tell her, oh, you're having fellowship with your Catholic brothers, huh? Because supposedly it's an Irish Catholic family and when they sit around the table and, okay, would you say the blessing? What is your blessing? Thanks for what we're about to, the grub we're about to receive. What, how do you say it? You say a little thing about thanks for all we got and something else in the grub. Amen. <laughs> anyway, they say little prayers like that. You know, they take turns and it's stupid. I go, this is dumb. This is a mockery. It is. Please never forget that the continual and never quitting plan of the enemy of our souls is to come between us and God. I was watching a pack of, goof, a, a wolves, <laughs> goofs, a wolves chasing these elk and they're running, 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 running and then pretty soon they, uh, they, they are able to make one go one way and once he gets out of the herd, they got him. And that's what the devil does. Touch it, you know, pull you aside. And you know what I mean after you haven't been in church in a few days, then it comes easier to stay home or to do something else or even, not even think, I should be in church. 
I need to be in church. We must avoid complacency which leads to weakness and indifference which leads to spiritual suicide. Are you following me? See, humility is always the right posture for believers. I've said that many times. Peter's tragic hour came upon him when he felt so sure of his spiritual condition and loyalty to Christ. I want you to go to jail. I'll even die for you. He couldn't even stand when a girl accused him. While we wait our Lord's return, church, we have sufficient instructions of what we're to do. We are to be ready to give an account of the life and opportunities that he has given to us. Make full use of your talents that is entrusted to us and see that they grow and increase and multiply. We must watch and pray so that our spiritual resources are always ample for the need of the hour. Daniel Webster was once asked, what is the most sobering fact ever to enter your mind? The great statesman answered without any hesitation, my personal accountability to God. A bewildered and disillusioned stuttering shepherd was out on the slopes of Mount Horeb when God spoke to him out of a burning bush. And Moses was to discover that his life counted for much more than what he ever imagined. And God asked him a question. A very important question. What is that in your hand? And I would translate that to you by saying, what, what is that that's available to you? What is it that you can do? And maybe you're not doing. What is that in your hand? The answer was that he had just an ordinary rod, such as any shepherd uses every day in caring for his sheep. It did not look like a talent to Moses, but used as God directed, it performed great miracles and great works. You don't know what God can do to you if you just make yourself available to him. Watch and pray. So often I pray, Lord, draw them close to you and close to one another when I'm praying for our families. <clears throat> this morning I pray for every one of you by name. I did. And those that are not here and those that are shut in. So much lying dormant in the hearts of men and women. Someone said fabulous things. No, he said fabulous wings unused stay folded in our hearts because we will not exercise them. You may think, oh, well, you know, Moses thought he was, he stuttered, he couldn't talk, he was this, he was dumb. God reminded him, hey, yes, on your own, you're like that, but let me work through you and you'll see what happens. Just an ordinary shepherd's rod. He saw the sea part. Whoa, how would you like to have that little rod just for half a day? Hmm? You know what I mean? I mean, hey, he struck a rock and whew, gushing fresh water came out. I would say it was a few dollars a, a month on it for a water bill. <laughs> Thank God for solar panels. It saves me a lot of money a month. <clears throat> But you know, I mean, thank God for what God can do with you. Listen, for just a moment as I close. I was just some little barrio guy here, raising hell, drinking and enjoying it less, and just carrying on. My home fell apart. Kathy went home to her mama. And there I was. And I kept drinking more. And running around the streets. And then God met me one night, changed my life. Nineteen sixty nine. Here I am. I we just had to give my wife of fifty some years over to the Lord. And here I still am. 
the hundreds of people through the years, the different miracles. There has been a week gone by since Kathy left. Somebody called me, Pastor, remember that this and that family? Well, yeah, I got, yeah, they were in your church and blah, blah, blah. And now they're calling me for this. And, okay. and you see it and you hear it, what goes on. So, you know, God can take you. You may think, well, what can I do? Well, God, you can, you can just tell people Jesus loves them. It's not going to kill you. Just greet them. Hello, how you doing? Hey, did you know Jesus loves you? Or they may say, you know, they may say something. Fine, you did your part. Because that, one man was told that, he never forgot it. He ended up getting saved. Because he remembered that Jesus loved him. They may come to a point in life where, you know, the devil's got the, right him on the run. And, and, and they remember that Jesus loved them. So they'll pause and say, Jesus, are you real? And guess what? He'll answer them. He'll meet them. How many of you glad that Jesus met you, saved you just in time? Isn't that great? Please stand to your feet. Come on, give him glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do this week? Okay. They go together. Watch and pray. Amen. Watch and pray. Let us not be <clears throat> indifferent to what God is saying to us. Let's apply ourselves. Let's do what God wants us to do. If you don't have anybody else, well, pray for me. I'm praying for you. I'm praying God uses you, helps you. You become what God wants you to be. You know? And it's, it's there. It's real. <clears throat> you know this lady here? Her name is Martha Martinez. I don't think they were really Catholics. I think um, they were encouraged to go to Baptist little church in San Dimas. Do you know that God used her to take my Kathy as little girls to a Bible study in the backyard somewhere? That's the first time Kathy heard about Jesus in that way. Of course, her life didn't change then, but you know, God used that, put that seed in there. And here, Kathy's going to heaven, and here's Martha here waiting for her number. We're all moving in that direction. It'd be wonderful one day. Isn't it great? Whatever you can do for God, whatever you can do, sow a seed, give a track, give somebody a bag of apples in Jesus' name. What's a bag of apples cost? Two ninety-five or something? You know what Kathy used to do? Can I tell you a little habit of hers? She'd go through uh, Tio Taco or whatever, or Carl Jr. or whatever, and then she'd come up there to pick up her order, and then she'd say, tell the girl, uh, would you please give me those people behind me, give me their ticket, and she'd pay it for it, and she'd go on. They never knew who she was or why she did it, but she just did it. And not just once, she would like to do that. She liked to give. She liked to give. I instilled that in her because I told her the only thing we're going to have in heaven is what we give away. Not what you hoard or what you own, it's what you give away. Remember what Jesus said to the young man? Sell what you got, give to the poor, you'll have treasures in heaven. I ain't going to be no poor guy in heaven. I'm not. So I give as much as I can. I have a joy in giving. And you and I have been called to give to the world. To give them a word. Give them a smile. Give them a glass of water. Whatever. You know, give. God will bless you for it. But you got to do it because of him. Because of him. In 10 years of driving the 210 to Pasadena in my little Volkswagen I had for 13 years, I don't know how many gallons of gas I gave away to people stranded or people that ran out of gas. 
but I would feel like Superman. Ta -da! You run out of the gas, I, no sweat. I take out my little can, pour the gallon of gas in the car, watch him take off. Man. Today I carry a little power pack I bought. So I'm always looking for somebody with a dead battery <laughs> so I can jump them. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's my joy. I just like to do that. I, I, I want to give. Hello? You take me out to lunch, you're going to have a hard time picking up the tab. You better fix it with the waitress. I'm going to rob you of your blessing. I'm really kidding. I'm not kidding you. So let's, let's do what we can. Amen? What's that that you got? You can smile. Well, then smile. I smile to the world, the world. Help people. Whatever you can do. Yeah? Give him a leg up. You know, I was talking to this lady about how my mother made capirata. How many of you know what capirata is? Okay. So this, my neighbor said, oh. I said, oh. She said my mother makes capirata. So about two, three days later, I get a text, John, my mother made you some capirata. We just left it on your front door. Given it shall be given you, and you, you'll be surprised what God will do for you. What surprises God has in store? Ay, ay, ay. I mean, we, we have a whole world. Of, and you, folks, listen, uh, life is not that long. It goes right real fast. It does. It does. So let's take advantage today. That's what Jesus said. Don't leave for tomorrow what you're going to do today. Huh? Let's do it for the glory of God. How many of you would like to be used of God maybe in doing something this coming week and then next week you tell me about it? Anybody here besides me? <clears throat> Only three of us? How many, let me see, how, honestly, how many of you would like to, for God to give you an opportunity to do something and that you'll be able to testify about it and say, hey, I, I did this. Praise God. Let's believe God. Father, I thank you for allowing me to speak these words to your people this morning. Lord, it, it, your words, your words in Mark uh, about watching and praying, Lord. And I pray, God, that we have, Lord, uh, shed some light in the importance of being, dear God, sober and awake and watchful in the things of the Spirit, making sure our spiritual lives are, Lord, filled and energized with your presence, Lord, not with a lot of preoccupations like Martha was there in the house of Lazarus, but God occupied by the things of the Spirit, like Mr. Wester said, about giving, being accountable to God in any given moment. Oh, Father, help us to walk in this, in this awareness. Help us, Lord, not to be sleepy heads, spiritually speaking, Help us to apply ourselves to Bible reading and praying for all those we know and all those who need help. Praying for the missionaries and, Lord, the, the preachers, the evangelists that are carrying out the Word of God. Lord, bless them. God, move by your Spirit. And now this morning, as we desire to be used of God this week, Lord, give every one of us a distinct opportunity to do something, Lord, to go out of our way or to do whatever, do something we haven't done in a while. Lord, use as we pray. Oh God, let your grace and your love shine through. You said, of grace you have received, by grace give. Freely you have received, freely give. Oh Lord, you're a great God of love and mercy and you're all about giving. You give us love, peace, joy, salvation, Lord. Deliverance, healing. You give us so much. We thank you. Help us to be like you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. <clears throat> Lord, we expect you to, Lord, give us opportunity to put this word to, to action, to work. And we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen and amen. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He set my feet. On solid ground, it makes me want to shout, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy, you're worthy. All, the all the glory, glory. And all, all of the honor, honor. And all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. All the glory. about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me to the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He set my feet on solid ground. Shout, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. Oh, you're worthy. All of the glory. All the, all glory. Of the honor. All, the honor. all of the praise. All the praise. It makes me want what to shout. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, oh, you're worthy. Yes, you all of the glory. Shout unto the Lord. Give him praise, church. Come on. Hallelujah. <clears throat> praise you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. You know, we can never praise the Lord enough or loud enough. I love it when we get loud and, and we get crazy. Amen. Go with God. Don't forget tonight. Come back tonight. Don't be lazy. Or stay home. <clears throat> Come and let's watch the second part of the rapture. It's going to happen sooner than you think. Come on back. Amen. Plan that. Love you folks. Love each other and uh, be friendly one with another.